hither ye, thine eyes emblazoned by fowls of the land, betwixt a duo of thorns, our hearts entwine. Thou wast a grump, a wilful play, on shivered sunlight. Doth thou chooseth the blinds or thy curtains? Drapes will fall. I don't know what that was, but please don't do it again. I want to, I want. Two, three, four. <laughs> So slow. It's like watching a snail try to fart. Unsuccessfully. So welcome to uh, Mindfulness Imagination Fair, where I try and have a brief conversation. We're always trying to have a brief conversation with our ego. It's like a, a battle. A war of the worlds. You on in the one corner you have the ego representing all the things that drive fear into you, all the reasons why you can't do something. And in the other corner we have our imagination, our flair, our get up and go, our reason for being alive. Now of course our ego keeps us nice and safe in this situation and, and stops us from making a fool of ourselves. But you know, sometimes in order to achieve something in life, you have to step out of your comfort zone. Comfort zone? Comfort zone. Like I'm doing now, by talking to you about nonsense and making something of a silly of myself. I don't want to say the word idiot. I don't like using the word idiot, so I won't use it. But you see, by doing that, you're making your ego retreat and you're increasing your knowledge of yourself, you're pushing out your boundaries and you're enriching your life and maybe the lives of others. You see, this is coming to me from my imagination. My imagination is what drives me. Now, some might not agree with that. Some, such as my ego, who's standing right there looking directly at me. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. And I'm laughing at you. You look like such a stupid idiot. What are you doing dressed in your stupid dressing gown? <laughs> you look like a right idiot. Don't listen to him. Exactly what I was saying in that scenario. You see, an ego is there to stop you from hurting yourself, to stop you from uh, making a fool of yourself, but it's also there to stop you from being successful and to stop you from realizing your dreams and to stop you from being a better person. The trick is to balance them both, to take your ego, to rest it somewhere, park it somewhere, give it some time, give it some thought, and use your imagination as well. You need to balance the two. Hey, that's like Star Wars, the balance of the force. Well, I guess it is. I wonder where that came from. Here's something I did earlier. People often stop me in the street and they say to me, why are you dressed like that? And here we go. So, we go with... Rising up, back on the street Did my time, took my chances Went the distance, now I'm back on my feet 
I'm just a man and his will to survive. So many times it happens too fast. You change your passion for glory. Don't lose your grip on the dreams of. <laughs> that was the doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, where were we? Oh yes, you know this one. Sing along with me. It's the... here. A bit like Toy Story. Only this is no toy. This is no plaything. This is seriously a serious sort of, you know, animal-like thing. We have to be careful. I'm just going to try and coax it out. That's the noise that it makes uh, at night or when it's alone to try and gather company. Wow, I, I can see it moving, I can see it. Yeah. Ooh. <gasps> Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. It's Bum the Bear. Now, Bum, are you okay? Are you comfortable in this situation? I'm getting an all clear that Bum the Bear is comfortable. Now, you might be wondering what has happened to poor Bum's nose. Well, you see, it used to be there. It used to be there, and then this was adapted, surgically enhanced nose. Now, since hanging by a thread, I'm often asked, how does bum smell? Well, I can tell you now, absolutely terrible. Now you see, bum the bear has no actual mouth to speak of. So he uses telepathic imagery to communicate. And only some of us have that unique ability to communicate back with the species of the likes of bum the bear. So, Bum, tell me, what have you been up to these last few days? Oh, my God, that's disgusting. Really? Oh, God. Okay, I'm now getting the impression that he's going to get angry with me. So I'm going to let Bum the Bear go back to his little spot, hiding away behind the door. You can... See his little ears going now, can't you? There we are. And I think, I think he's gone. He's safe now. And we can be sure that while we're here, he will not raise his voice. But while we're gone, we may hear that distant call, that distant poem of Bun the Bear. Be sure to tune in next time for something else. Until then, from me, bye-bye.